we're going to uh, make a video today on uh, replacing steering stem bearings and we're going to talk about kits and options and I'm going to talk about something that I think a lot of people overlook so we're going to try and make this quick as well so a lot of us have traditional steering stem bearings that are either loose balls or in this case a caged ball bearing set you can see one was missing here and it, sometimes it's just so easy for us to go to our aftermarket parts catalogs and find uh, th this company all balls they're outstanding as far as making kits that'll fit a lot of different vehicles here and the other problem we have is we're doing one of those Asian uh, let's say it was a Lafon yeah Lafon vehicles everybody calls them a CRF 110 or CRF 80 or something and and we just gotta be careful because it isn't always the same so what you're gonna do when you get your bearing kit we're gonna make sure where our two bearings ride that we actually measure those areas I'm not even worried about cleaning it right now I want to see what size it is then I would take my bearing and measure the bearing and make sure that we even have the right uh, parts in the kit does that make sense yep. yep okay so that's that's definitely a step is verifying is this even possible at all another thing that I want to do is measure my overall package here to kind of see what I'm dealing with now I'll show you why that's important all right what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on here is we've got this new bearing set that has to fit at the right depth and you can see there it only goes so far and that bottoms out if we're crazy tall or worse off if we're short we could potentially alter where the threads are going to be able to have either enough thread or we're going to move the thread up so far that we our nut would hit the bottom here and run out of threads Does that make sense so once again just kind of going down our checklist is we need to make sure and measure this doing something like this we want to see what we're working with okay all right so here is my last little tip we're not going to actually videotape the installation this video this is about aftermarket parts and considerations where we get into trouble and here is the big one let's talk about this tapered wheel bearing for example here and look at our different pieces here so this is our outer race this is the cage part for the bearings and then this would be our inner race and here's where people get into trouble so the whole point of this seal is to sit in that uh, frame and protect this so that the grease will stay in and the uh, the grease will stay in the bearing and that the moisture won't get in there the rain and power wash and everything else where we get a problem right actually look at the bike again here you don't have to flip it but make sure you guys are clear at what we're talking really? about here yep right here just to be clear, the seal is sealing the bearing underneath here, and you want to look for the fitment of that. Okay, so that's the, that's the goal. And then when the triple tree goes on top of this, it's going to you know pinch the whole package together. And you would think, just like wheels or anything else, we have to have all metal surfaces. We can't have any gaps. So would you agree that this seal has to directly go ahead and pull that rest on this bearing? Yep. Yeah. Okay. There, there can't be a gap. Look at this. Let's see if we can't zoom in here. Can you see? There's a big gap in there. Yeah. yeah. Holy smokes! What's gonna happen when you torque this down? That's gonna to squish. Away, right? Something's got to give. Do you think the metal bearing's gonna give or this rubber seal? Rubber seal. Okay. Look at that. And you think, well, Shane, when you tighten it down, it'll eventually make contact, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's bad, and here's why. Look at when I turn this sideways, can you see that the bearing, it, what's happening is the seal is actually hitting the cage. If I hit the cage, do you see how it impacts how its ability to rotate? Yep. Now, here's the thing. So you say, well, Shane, God, they're selling these like crazy. How can this be? A whole bunch of people are putting these on steering stems, and you know the steering might stiffen up but we're kind of strong we muscle through that and they go oh, the steering's just kind of stiff if you do that to a wheel you are going to have a huge problem what you need to do to combat this this is still a good kit I really like these but what we need to do is we need to be able to put washers in here to take up that gap so that we just have that slight little bit of space in there that then when we torque it down this has full movement Okay, and what I mean by that, let's let's just take some. It's not the easiest washer to find because it has to be something thin like this. We have to have a big enough OD 
to clear the shaft, but it's small enough to fit inside of there. So it's, it's got to be like a thrust washer. But just to prove a point here, I'm going to show you what this will look like when it is spaced correctly. Ooh, that's pretty good, pretty good right there. Now I need to, I need to see what's going to happen when I compress it. Look at that. It's not actually. I'm look at. I'm above it. This thickness here. Once I go back to assembling this on the vehicle, will allow full torque, full seal contact, and that is a properly assembled setup. If you were putting, let's do a summary here. If you're putting stock parts back on a motorcycle, this is what's so great about OEM. Let's say you're working on a Honda or Suzuki, you're working on a CRF 110, and you are putting in OEM packaged Honda parts. I mean, you literally just put take the parts out of the bag. You're going to do a little bit of inspection, just make sure they weren't mixed up in the parts department or something. But all this measuring, making sure, spacing the bearings and seals, you don't have to do any of that. So. Uh, considerations to make when installing your steering stem bearing kits.